Okay, now we will move on to the, the main process, the gas junction arc welding. So, we looked at the physics of arc and we ignited the arc, now we can weld, right. So, if you look at uh, the gas junction arc welding, it is one of the simplest processes. So, all we have to do is we need to ignite the arc and then we can weld. So, we will have uh, in the setup, so this is the base material. Okay, so, sometimes you also use a, a, a copper backing plate, backing plate to conduct the heat effectively and you have a tip, ceramic tip and this is your tungsten electrode and then you pass a shielding gas and shielding gas goes in there and then this is a tip of electrode and you form an arc, right. The most of the cases uh, the shielding gas is argon in gas tungsten arc welding. Okay, sometimes we use organ helium mixtures okay. and this is a contact tube which actually shield or, or where the main uh, the electrode and then uh, the assemblies are, are mounted and then these are connected to a power source. Okay. It is clear, it is very simple I just brought uh, this the, the contact tip set up. So, basically this is a, a tungsten electrode, so the red color here means a lot, okay. So, the, this is painted with red, is not it? So, red means this is thoriated, it contains 2 percent thorium oxide. So, we use a lot of color scales, it can be green or it can be red and we cannot write it is 2 percent thoriated here, right. So, we generally we identify the composition of the electrode by the color code. So, if it is red in the top, it is 2 percent thorium oxide containing tungsten, okay. So, so we will look at when you are looking at it. So, we just have the setup something like this. So, we have a, a this is the, the contact tube and you have the another one. So, this is where the organ goes in and then comes out inside over here and then we insert it. The, electro, the, 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 the tungsten electrode comes out, okay. So, this is fixed to another assembly on the top, that is it. So, now we need to pass a current between the electrode and the base material and you send the shielding gas, you strike an arc, simple, is not it? Yeah, in gas section arc welding. Again, the, the process characteristics uh, they are all determined by the shielding gas and uh, the current and voltage, is not it? So, we looked at uh, the, the, uh, the heat generation itself is governed by the electric field E, is not it? And then shielding gas which determines the number of electrons and ion percent. So, that is what we, we looked at the electric conductivity of arc, is not it? The, the, the two important uh, factors that we can influence is number density of electrons and ions that is determined by temperature and the shielding gas, right. Temperature we cannot control, but you can control the shielding gas chemistry, so that the N i or N e can be changed, right. And then E, the electric field itself that you apply. So, by changing these two, we can also change the heat generation in the arc, right, it is clear, good. So, we look at the video in arc. Yes. So, this is our tip of a tungsten electrode what I showed you and we have arc here and it is molten because of the heat that is generated. Yes, clear. So, now what is the polarity of this tip? Come on guys. Quiz question. So, this will be, come on, what should reach the tungsten electrode? Electrons? Ions. So, then it must be negative. So, it is straight polarity or reverse polarity. If it is electronegative, direct current E n, that is a straight polarity, is not it? So, if you make the electron reach the tungsten cathode, then you have a problem, is not it? Good. So, what are the, the characteristics again? So, this is one of the oldest processes, gas tungsten arc welding. 
So the, the name they gave is organ arc. Okay, the organ arc welding process. Okay, and then the the process they were patented in the name of organ arc or Healy arc uh, in uh, its original trade names. And subsequently, once the patent got expired, then everyone started using it. Okay, so it is also known as TIG, but TIG is colloquial name. Okay, so the scientific name generally we use GTAW. The TIG is a colloquial name like tungsten and red gas welding. Okay, it is commonly used in Europe. The GTAW is a scientific name. Okay, so generally we do it in a, uh, using an inert gas. So, so most of the cases uh, by argon, sometimes with the argon helium mixture. Okay, and it has extremely high energy density because we use argon and helium. Because both the gases uh, have uh, significantly high ionization potential. Okay, so the energy density, the arc energy will be much higher than using it uh, with the diatomic gases. And the process is extremely controllable because you do not really change the arc characteristics by melting fillers, right in this case the arc is very stable. Okay, so, once you have arc very, uh, make the arc very stable, your joint quality will be very good because you are not going to change the envelope, the arc envelope characteristics, right. So, unfortunately, the deposition rates are not high compared to GMAW or other processes because you are not most likely adding filler, is not it? You, the, the GTW commonly used for an autogenous wells because you just melt the interface and deposit, right. And you can also add filler like I showed you in, a, in the previous slides and these fillers are uh, added to the arc to melt the filler and then Subsequently, the filler, the molten filler, can fill the well, well cavity, the bevel. Okay. So because of that, you know the productivity is very low. But for the, the high precision uh, joints, we always use uh, GTAW, and if there is no other choice, okay. And most of the multipass wells. So if you are doing a welding in multipass, for example, thick section wells, say 20 mm, for example you need a 6 passes to fill this cavity, always the root pass, root means the first root pass, it is always done with GTAW. You may use the GMAW or SMAW and subsequently the root passes is always carried out using GTAW because of the, the process control we can achieve, okay. Because when you are doing root pass that is the first joint you are going to make and you have to make sure that the, the root pass is made correctly otherwise you will have uh, the issues with distortion for example or improper filling of root cavity then that may influence the subsequent process. But you, you cannot use uh, for example uh, to weld uh, thick sections and multipass welds GTAW because it is waste of time because you have to do it very slowly and you have to fill the material and uh, the, if you want to add filler with GTAW you have to know the filler should reach your well cavities as well. So, you do a root pass with GTAW. So, once root pass is done properly, then subsequently you can deposit remaining passes either with a GMAW or MMAW. Okay, this is the common practice generally we do it. Okay, it is good. So, as I told, uh, told, told you, the, the electrode it is not pure metal, we always add some oxides. Why do we add oxides? To reduce? To reduce? To reduce what? To reduce work function, is not it? What is work function? Yeah, so that is the, the minimum energy required to knock an electron from an orbital of a metal, okay. That is work function, is not it? If I, so oxides they have very low function compared to the, the metals. So if you dope the tungsten electrode with oxides, so of oxides are there in the surface for example and oxide can release the electron at which low temperature. And once the electrons release obviously they bombard the metal surface and subsequently they trigger thermionic emission, okay. So most commonly used electrode is thoriated tungsten. 
and it is banned in most of the countries because it is radiative. And this you cannot buy in Europe now, but you can buy in India. So, this is 2 percent thoriated thorium oxide containing electrode. And unfortunately, th th this gives the best arc. Okay, so, the thoriated electrode uh, because of the, the work function is so low and it emits electrons sustained manner for uh, you know, with a uh, very low electric field. So, unfortunately, you know, uh, we cannot buy this uh, very easily because of the thorium oxide, we dope it. Uh, thorium oxide itself is very difficult to get. So, these are expensive now, but we also use other oxides. For example, um, the cerium oxide and lanthanum oxide and uh, yttrium oxide as zirconium oxide. Okay, so, the one I have here is uh, this guy, red label. This is a 2 percent thorium oxide containing uh, electrode. So, in most of the cases, by looking at the color label on top, you can identify the composition of the electrode. Okay. So, when you are doing welding, especially in underwater welding, for example, you are replacing electrode and you will not be, uh, you will not, you know, have time to read. The most of the welders, uh, you know, they are all uh, not highly skilled, uh, uh, highly educated, but they are very highly skilled. So, in most of the cases, we train them by these color codes and standards. Okay. So, for example, you may say the, the green electrode, that is pure tungsten. Okay. So, if it is orange label, it is the cerium, uh, ceriated, cerium oxide containing electrode or black, gold, blue, yellow, the one I have is red, so which is containing 2 percent thorium oxide electrode and these are very difficult to get. Okay. So, these guys and then blue, brown and then white for zirconium oxide. Yes, it is clear? The other important uh, characteristic of electrode is electrode tip angle. It is very, very important. Okay. In most of the industrial production conditions and this is very significant because you may start with uh, measuring the electrode in the morning when the shift starts. So, when you keep on welding it with the without change machining the tip again, you would significantly change the bead geometry. Okay. So, I, I just put uh, three cases here and if you change the electrode tip angle, you also change the, uh, the size shape of an arc. Okay. Say for example, here, so suppose this is your uh, center axis of the electrode and this is the angle theta. If the angle is minimal, you have a very sharp tip, is not it? So, what happens here if you have very sharp tape, the area on which you emit electrons also very high because so this entire area can be heated up to beyond its thermionic emission temperature, is not it? And then what happens the electrons will be emitted to, to much deeper or much larger area in this case. That means, that the arc can be ignited somewhat deeper in the electrode. Whereas, in this case, if this is your the angle, if theta is higher than in this case, the area in which you trigger thermionic emission will not be as deep as in this case, is not it? So, in that case, your arc envelope diameter decreases as compared to this. So, you will be converging the arc, you try to converge the arc over smaller cross sectional area compared to here. Okay. So, if you start welding it up after some time because of the heating, your electrode tape would start blunt, it would start blunting, right. Then what happens? Over time, if you are doing after 4 or 5 times or 6 times uh, uh, welding, you will end up seeing the penetration increases, whereas the weld width decreases, right? Because you will start changing the, the arc characteristics. 
and why that happens because of the thermionic emission you trigger in much more deeper in this case than in this case and if you have a much even flatter or higher angle then your arc cross section decreases significantly. So, you will end up penetrating much higher because heat is concentrated over a very <coughs> narrow region. You are not changing any parameters, you keep the same electric field, same voltage, same gas, you would end up seeing the change in the well geometry. And this is a classical example, it happens in a production environment. So, you start with a high, nicely ground electrode, you weld it after uh, unknowingly you change the polarity in such a way that you will end up melting the tip or changing the, uh, the electrode tip angle and you do it after 10 wells you did not notice that electrode tip is changed you keep on doing it and then coming and uh, showing me the result. Sir, I found uh, a uh, different well bit geometry comparing in the morning in the afternoon obviously it will change because if you do not look at the electrode tip angle then you will also change the arc envelope characteristics and leading to change in the bridge geometry. So, that happens because again the, the, the at which point you start igniting the arc and from which point thermionic emission happens okay. So, because in this case the most likely so you will end up heating the, the electrode area much more deeper whereas in here you will be heating only up to this for example and here even less. So, that is where you trigger a emission from where your case ignited. Yes, it is clear? It is good. <coughs>